In the last video, we looked at student projection based on extrapolation. In this video, we're going to look at pro projection of students based on student flow methods. This is considered to be more up-to-date method of projection. It makes use of the student flow parameters of promotion, repetition, and dropout. When using this method, study the factor that influences the intrasystem flow of students. What are these methods that interest? One, you talk about admission age population, you talk about the admission rate, you talk about the repetition rate, you look at the promotion rate, and you look at the dropout rates. These are the, the rates, the factors, the student flow, it, the factors that influence the student flow within the system. Now, what are these rates to be considered as policy variables? Because changes that occur depending on the party in power. Because there are times you have admission age population, the, it is a, a policy issue, admission rate, repetition rate, promotion rate, and dropout rates. Now, let's look at the data that will be required when using student flow method for projection. Projected population of age group corresponding to admission age. Now, you look at the enrollment class by class, grade-wise, in the year preceding the base year. First, we are saying that you should have to consider the age group corresponding to the admission age. That is what you consider in the age population. Now, you look at the enrollment class by class, uh, that B is by enrollment class by class in the year preceding the base year. And secondly, you look at the enrollment and number of repeaters from the previous year by class within the base. Year. And let's look at an example here. Example of uh, flow enrollment projection. In this example, you look at in the first uh, column, we are having the year. The second column, you are having the estimated population of primary school going year. Then you have the admission rate. Then we have the grades, which means the year is stated in here from 2007 to 20, uh, 2012. Then the estimated population for this for each of the years are stated here because there must be estimated population that that year is likely to have. Then there must be admission rates. The admission rates need to be determined. What is going to be the rate of admission in the various uh, years? Now you have the grades. If you look through here, you discover for 2007-2008, we have uh, there is uh, the enrollment. Then the second year have enrollment and the total number of repeaters. You need to obtain these two levels because if you don't have it, you will not be able to calculate others. So you must have the enrollment the uh, for two uh, years. You have the enrollment, the next or you have the ones for this, you cannot project others. So let's see what happened next. Using the table one, the data in year 2007 and 2008 are given. Do you see that? You have 2007, 2000, this must be given. You have to collect it. You have to collect the data from the uh, viable resource, uh, sources, maybe from the student register, from records, uh, however. Now the project year 2009, to 2012. So from 2009-2009 are the years you need to project to know what will be the enrollment for those years. If you have two years preceding years, you cannot project for others. Now you have to uh, calculate admission rates. You need to calculate the admission rates because if you calculate the admission rate, you'll be able to know the rate at which the other projections will be. Look how we have 66.6 and we have 68.75. If you look down below, the others are constant. However, we're going to see what happened here soon. Now, in 2007, we have 100 over 150. How did we get this 100 and the 150? Now, let's look through what we have here because time that that gave us 66.6% uh, this may not be the true rate because we did not know the number of repeaters in the 100 this is the year this is the entry year the base year we are saying that 100 uh, students were enrolled but out of these 100 and students that were enrolled we do not really know how many of them were already repeating in these 100 years, uh, sorry, in these grades before 
or the new entrant join them. However, we are saying that the estimated population for this age that's supposed to enter this grade one is 150,000. Wherever, let us cite example now using uh, the primary school. You know, the age going age for primary school is six years. So if we are saying that at the age of six, children has to go to primary one. In this case, it means the age population for primary one, that age six is 150,000. So you say this over this. But why we are not considering this rate, that is 66.6% is because it is not known how many people we are repeating before new people were added to this grid. So what do we do? We have to look at the next one because the next one would be more of uh, a, a viable um, rate. Now, that is why you now have in 2008, we have to consider the 2008. In 2008, you have 120,000 students that are enrolling. Out of this 120,000, 10,000 are repeaters. So what do you do? Remove this 10 from 120,000 so that you get the total number of actual students, that new student that enrolled in grade one. And where you get that number, you now base it on 160 and you get divide the times by 100, you get the rate. That is how this was attained. If you look at it, you have 120,000 minus 10,000 over 160 times 100. If you divide it out, that will give you 68.75. Therefore, make 68.75 constant for the other years. That is why you now have 68.75 constant for all these years. Now, calculate the promotion, repetition, and dropout rate for all the classes in 2007 and 2008, right? If you remember in the past videos, we have looked at how you calculate the promotion, the dropout rate, and the rest of them. So what we're going to do now is to do the calculation to know the, uh, the, uh, the petition, dropout, and the rates that we have in all. So here we have the enrollment. We are giving the repetition. So if you are going to calculate it now, you calculate it based on the number that we promoted, based on the number that repeated, and so on. So if you take this, for example, you will have 100,000. 100,000, if you bring it down, if you move it down, if you remember what we are doing in the past ones, you bring this 100, it means out of the 100,000 here, 92,000 we are promoted. Uh, sorry, we have promotion. We don't, it's not 92,000 because out of this 92,000 here, we are saying 9,000 of them are repeaters. So for you to get the total number that we are promoted out of this 92,000, remove 9,000 from this 92,000. The same thing goes here. If you get this, you have 95,000 from uh, year two and to year three. So here we are having 90,000. It's not all the 90,000 that came from the 95,000. Out of this 90,000, eight of them are repeaters. So if you remove eight from 90,000, you will get the total number that came here that you are now going to say over 95 or over 100 and divide and times by 100 to get the rate of promotion and the same thing go with uh, the repeaters now let's now let's quickly look at here with what i've just said the promotion rate you have it in 2007 that is 92 minus 9 that is what i said a while ago over 100 that gives you uh, times one uh, over one 100,000 times 100, that will give you 83. The same way, you have to calculate the repetition for 2007 in grade 1. That is 10 over 100 times 100 equals to 10%. That is what I have described to. Then to get the dropout rate, remember, it's going to be 100 minus P, that is a promotion rate plus repetition rate. The promotion rate is 83%, repetition rate is 10%. Then when you add it, that will give you 93 and we take it away from 100%, that will give you 7%. Now, this is a summary of what we have. Now, to go further, what do we do? Now, assume that the rate calculated, will remember. remember we have calculated rate, and that rate, we are saying that you have to make it constant. And if the rate is constant, what is this rate? It's 68.75%. So you now apply it, times it, with the projected population. For, for each year, for example, 68.75 percent times 170 for grade one in year 2009. Remember, we are to project for 2009 to 2012. Then you apply the rates all through because we have the estimated population for all the years. It is the enrollment we do not know. So you use the estimated 
uh, the sorry the assumed rates now to times the estimated population for each year and this will give you this number which means in year 2009 116 675 uh, will be uh, uh, is we have this number before we calculate the projected enrollment now to get the actual number that will be enrolled for that year what do we now do say so projected enrollment for grade one of 2009 new entrants plus repeaters from this same grade grade one in the preceding year 2008 so here that will be equals to what are the new entrants? The new entrants are 116,875. That is the new entrance. So plus, we now have to find out how many are repeating. Remember, we have calculated the rate of repeaters here. So from the rate of repeaters, what do we do? We say times 10. That will be 120,000 times 10. Because we have 120 that we had in the other year coming the, the, pre, the preceding year. So new note, 120 is the enrollment of for grade one in 2008. You know, we are now calculating for 2009. So that enrollment in 2008, you consider it, and we are saying that out of this enrollment in 2008, 10% of them are going to repeat. So if 10% of them are going to repeat, they add that 10% to the new entrant. That is what it means. So the new entrant is 116,875 is here plus 12%. That 12% is the calculation you made here, 120,000 times 10. Now, that will give you 128,875. So the projected enrollment for grade 1 in 2009 will be 128,000. 875. Now, projected enrollment for grade 1 in 2010, the same thing will be applicable. So, what do you do? Remember, these are the new entrants. 123,750 is the new entrants. Those are the people that are coming in newly. So, what do you do again? Remember, we have been giving the formula here that it will be uh, repeat uh, new entrant plus repeaters from the same grades in the previous year. So, for the previous year again, you have to look at what will be the previous year now and the repeater. So here we have plus 128 because 128, remember, is now the number we are working with. You see it? Because it's the year preceding 2010. So since this is the year 2009, preceding 2010, and this is the enrollment, is this enrollment we will not consider? We will no longer consider 2008. So it will be 128875 times zero that is ten percent zero point one zero so when you times it zero point so this is in uh, the, uh, the fraction you times it with this and that will give you twelve thousand eight hundred and eighty eight add it all that will give you 145 so you do the same for 2011 remember again for 2011 we are giving here so what are you going to do it will be, again be 130,625 which is the new entrant you are now going to add it to the number of repeaters. So repeaters will now come. 10% of 145638 will be the repeaters that you will add to this to get for the year 2011. And the same thing you will do for others. Projected enrollment for grade 1 in 2011. To project the enrollment for grade 1, you have 13625 plus. Remember, we are talking about the enrollment in the previous year, uh, the repeaters in the previous year so we'll have 145 times 0 0.10 that is the 10 percent and that will give us 145 189 so to project for 2012 we now have to bring in the new entrant which is 137500 plus the repeaters which is 145 189 times 0 0.10 and that will give us 137500 plus 14,000 14,519 and that will give us uh, uh, 152,019 52, enrollment. So coming to the projected enrollment for grade 2, what do you now need to do is projected enrollment for grade 2 in 2009, promotion grades 1 plus repeaters. So you have to think of those who are many were promoted from grade 1. So in this case, we are going to apply the rates we have calculated, which is 83%. We know we have been using 10%. So now we are going to use the 83% of the promotion rate. So if you go back to grade one and of uh, the 2009 to get for the 2000 and uh, the, the 2009 grade two of it, you now have to 120,000 times 83%. 
So you now add it to the number of repeaters in the previous year. The number of repeaters in the previous year to get it, that will be 92,000 times 9,000 over 950, 9,000, 95,000 times 100. That will give you the total number required. So in this case, the repetition for grade 2, which will be applied to all grade years. So with this, now we are going to have this rate, which is 0 0.095. That will be applied to all the grade years we're going to use. So in this regard, therefore, projected enrollment for grade 2 in 2009 will therefore be 120,000 times 83% plus 92,000 times 0.095%. That will give us 108,340. 108, Again, you come up projected enrollment for grade 2 in 2010. For projected, we follow the same trend. What is this trend now? Remember, we are taking the promotion from grade 1. So you take the promotion from grade 1 and add the percentage. So what is the percentage? We are still using the 83 percent. That is why you have it here. Now plus the repeater. So do you calculate the number of repeaters in the same way? We have the calculated repeaters and that will give you 117,258. Now to project a enrollment for grade 2 in 2011, what do we now need to do is go the same way. You get the total number of the promoters taking the 83 percent as well of those that are promoted from grade one to grade two then you add it to the total number of repeaters that will be there now again you have you will now arrive at 132,220 now you come up projected enrollment for grade two in 2012 is still the same procedure you will follow to get this remember you get the number promoted from grade one so to get the number promoted from grade one, remember we'll have 154,064 so times 83 percent. That will give you the total number promoted from grade one. And when you do it, you are going to have 140,415. Now this approach is adopted for all other grades to obtain the projected enrollment by grades as shown in the table above. That is how you got the ones we have been doing or the table we had before. That is how it all came to be.